Okay, so we're going to start on page 93 of the homework. My first step in this Bach example is to find and label all of the non-chord tones. Um, in order to do that, I need to analyze the harmonies that I see represented here. Now, I know this is confusing uh, for some of you because it's new, but um, basically we're going to be compressing chords uh, and uh, naming chords and then uh, doing our best to identify which pitches don't belong to the chords. The chapter in which we dealt with chord progressions is going to be helpful here because you'll, you'll be able to kind of get the knack of determining which pitches are or which pitches are not chord tones. Um, so we're going to start here with this example. I look at the key signature and I see that there's one flat. It's a B flat. So looking at this first chord, I have B flat, F, and D. If I compress that, I have B flat, D, and F. That's a B flat major triad. Now, this pitch here, this A, does not belong to that. If I were to include that, it would become a, a B flat major, major seven in third inversion, and Bach wouldn't have used that. We're not going to be dealing with a whole lot of seventh chords besides um, uh, five sevens or dominant sevens, and sometimes we may have a seven seven or a two seven. You're not going to find a lot of one major sevens in, in music of this period. So already, right off the bat, I can see there's probably a non-chord tone there. I'm not absolutely sure yet until I do an analysis. However, I can guess that that is probably a non-chord tone. If we look at the next measure, is there anything in this measure that looks like it could be a non-chord tone? Now, look at the harmonic rhythm here. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two three-ish, <laughs> one, right? So we have a harmonic rhythm where it seems like the uh, piece of music is going to change harmonies on each of the quarter notes for the most part, with a few exceptions. So any of these eighth notes are probably going to be non-chord tones. They seem like they're going to be non-chord tones. Now, we don't know if it's going to be this or this that's the non-chord tone necessarily until we do a, uh, an analysis. When we are dealing with non-chord tones, we need to remember how a non-chord tone is approached and how it's left determines what kind of non-chord tone it is. I'm going to start in the first measure. I have a B-flat, an F, and a D. B-flat, D, F is a B-flat major triad, so I'm going to write down B-flat major. It's really hard to do this. Bear with me. Okay, so that's probably a B-flat major. Then I have an E, I'm sorry, a G, a B-flat, and an E-natural. G, B-flat, E-natural. E-natural, G, and B-flat is an E-diminished triad. The G is in the bass, that means it's a first inversion. So E, diminished six, probably there. Here I have an F, a C, an A, and an F. That's an F major triad. Looking at this next measure, I have an E flat, a C, a G. I also have a D and an F. Now, if I look at this little figure here, and this little figure here, we see that we step down and then we step back up. We step down and step back up. Most likely, that means that this pitch here is probably a non-chord tone, this F and this D. If I treat those as non-chord tones, what kind of non-chord tone will they be? Well, how is this F approached? It's approached down by step. How is it left? Up by step. The non-chord tone that is approached in one direction by step and then left by step in the opposite direction is called a neighboring tone. So I'm going to guess that this is a neighboring tone and this is a neighboring tone. Let's go back to the first measure. If this is a B flat major chord and then an E diminished six here, that A doesn't really fit. So I'm gonna circle that for now. How is this approached? It's approached down by step, and then it's left down by step. The non-chord tone that's approached in the same direction and left in the same direction by step is a passing tone. So I think that's probably a passing tone. Sorry, back to this measure. These are probably going to be neighboring tones. And then that would make this a C major six triad. 
That's a neighbor tone, that's a neighbor tone. Then we have C major six here again. Here we have a C major minor seven chord. Here's F major, B flat major. This is also B flat major. This, looking here, which of these pitches do you think are non-chord tones? Let's look at the obvious ones first. Down by step, up by step, that's probably going to be a neighboring tone. Down by step, up by step, that's probably going to be a neighboring tone. Does everybody see how I'm guessing that those are probably going to be neighboring tones? I'm not absolutely sure until I do an actual complete analysis, but just by sight, it seems that way. Now, if you listen to this little bit that uh, I'm going to have on a separate video of me playing it, um, you will notice that you'll hear non-chord tones as well as see them, and that's going to be helpful. Now, this chord here, what kind of chord would be C, G, F, and G? C, G, F, and G. So, if I were to do this up here, the compression, we have a C, a G, and an F. Does that look like any triad that we know, yes or no? The answer is no. We don't have a triad that is built using a perfect fifth and then a major second between the upper voice and the middle voice. That's weird. We know that that's not a traditional triad. Now, if I look at what this F does, it moves down by step. If I look at before this F, we see that it's held over from the previous measure. There is a non-chord tone in which it's approached by the same pitch and then resolved by step down. Approach by same pitch, resolve by step down. That is a suspension. So I'm gonna circle this F and say it's probably gonna be a suspension. What kind of suspension is it? In order to figure that out, I look at the bass pitch, which is a C, and I count up to F. C, D, E, F, that's a fourth up. Now, C to E, C, D, E, that's a third. So this suspension is a four, three suspension. This looks a lot like what we saw here and here. Let's go back to this measure. You see how step down, step up, step down, step up? These are probably going to be neighboring tones. Okay, so we have B flat major here. Going to this, we have C, E, G. That's C major. Here we have a B flat. I'm going to count that as part of it, and we're going to say that here it's a C major minor 7. And then here F, A, C, that's F major. So looking at this, sorry about the camera work, you can see what I've done. I've circled things that I think are going to be non-chord tones. The reason I say think are going to be non-chord tones is because I'm not 100% sure until we um, do a complete analysis. Now, I also say I'm not 100% sure because we can't call Bach up and ask him, is, is this A in this first measure, is that a non-chord tone or did you mean it to be a chord tone? We can't ask him that, unfortunately. So our work here is to come up with a hypothesis. It's our best guess, utilizing the knowledge that we've gained so far. So these non-chord tones that I have circled are my best guess at what they are. So that's the start. So in the key of F major, most likely F, because we see a C major minor 7 here, going to F major, that's a 5-1. So I'm going to guess that this is an F major. So if I go back here to the beginning, I'm going to switch the camera around and say we are in F. A B flat chord in F is going to be a four. An E diminished six is going to be a seven diminished six, moving to an F major, which is a one. Here we have a five, six, then a five, seven, sorry, moving over, five, six, five, seven, C major six, C major minor seven, going to F major, which is a one, going to B flat, which is a four, going to C major, which is a five, then we add the seventh here, and it's a five, seven to one. So that's how I did that. I analyzed the piece, I looked at the chords, 
because of my knowledge of the diatonic chords in F major, I was able to kind of guess at which pitches were probably going to be non-chord tones and which weren't. Now, if you remember from the notes that I gave you on non-chord tones, non-chord tones generally happen on weak beats or weak parts of the beat. So if you look here at beat one, you see the non-chord tone happens on the and of one. If you look at beat one here, non-chord tones happen on the and of one. Over here, non-chord tones happen on the end of one and on the end of two. However, there's one that happens on a strong beat. Now, which of the non-chord tones generally occur on strong beats? Suspensions and retardations. So this is my completed project of identifying non-chord tones. The next video, I'm going to um, rewrite it down here without the non-chord tones. So stay tuned for episode two. God, I feel like a dork. Sorry, guys.